hey everyone it's tara with the painted cicada welcome let me make sure my live is in the right place we will get started All right, um, in just a second here, I will go over the supply list. If you need an extra minute or two to gather up your supplies, now is the time. All right, it looks like people are hopping on here. Um, just going to make sure I didn't have any last minute joiners. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Welcome. 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 Um, I am so glad you're here. Um, my name is Tara Lynn and I am the Painted Cicada and we are doing January Friendship. Um, this is a super fun mixed media painting um, that I did recently and I absolutely fell in love with it. So um, this was my original and as you can see here, it's slightly different than uh, what we what I have uh, up in the corner, um, as well as um, what I used for my uh, graphic. And that's because I made a second version, um, just making sure it was kind of easily reproducible uh, so I could teach. So this is my original. I'm super fond of it. I made a green flower. Um, this was my second version. And I like this one equally as much and uh, what i did with this is i used a nice bright color for my flower um, and i added the word friendship and i really like it um, so i'm excited to teach with you um, i hope by showing you the two different versions i have made uh, you feel like you can add your own personal touches uh, and you can you know change up the doodles, change up the way we make the flowers, change up the colors, um, and really make it your own. Um, also, you can see the difference. Um, you know, when you finish a piece of art and you frame it, it really adds that that final finishing touch that makes such a big difference. So after you create your piece, I really encourage you to um, frame it and display it. All right, so here's my... My cheat sheet with my steps. Um, so if you have found this live, you have the uh, supply list here, but quickly I'm going to go over these supplies. Um, you want a nice bright light green. Um, I'm going to mix mine with phthalo green and white, but if you have a pre-mixed bright light green, feel free to um, choose that. Um, so I've got phthalo green and white available. Um, I am going to use an olive green and I'm going to uh, use my green gold with a touch of brown for that. Uh, if you have a pre-mixed olive green, that's fine as well. Uh, today I'm going to make my flower uh, with shades of pyrrole red um, and I'm going to mix that with a little white. And then Titan Buff, which is a cream color. So um, Unbleached Titanium is also similar. Or if you've got a color that's cream, that is fine. Um, again, these colors can all be changed up according to your preference. Um, I included Gesso. Uh, I like to use Gesso um, as kind of a, a grunger upper on my background. Um, what else? Ephemera and Scrap. So let's talk about that. When I say ephemera and scraps, um, what I mean is just old pieces of whatever. So I've got myself a nice little pile going here. 
And so you can see I've just got like old scrapbook paper. I don't know where that dot came from. Um, this was an old piece that I was trying to make art from. The art didn't work out, but uh, I kept it because I liked it. This is a page from a calendar. I've got a book page. Um, probably years ago, I printed out this bird, never used it. Rip this out of a magazine. So you can see I've just got a little bit of everything. Here's some tissue paper. I've got music. Here's a little piece of a map. Um, what I tried to do and what I want to encourage you to do as you're sorting through yours and choosing your um, ephemera is I tried to stick with neutrals with a hint of green. And I'll tell you why I did that um, is because uh, the the main color that I'm going to focus on for my carnation is going to be a variation of red. And the opposite of red, I've got my, I've got a little cheat sheet. I've got my little, um, I got this for Christmas, but this is my color wheel. So if you have a color wheel available, the opposite of red is green. And so green is really going to make that red pop. If we have a background that has, um, greens in it, it's really going to make the carnation be the focal point, make the carnation pop. Um, so that's why um, in a lot of these, uh, you are going to see that I've got some greens. Um, and it's kind of the secondary color. Some are neutral, right? So I've got some that are just, you know, kind of uh, a taupey off-white color, some that are white. Um, but I do have kind of green as my um, accent color there. And if you uh, have a printer available and chose to use the downloads, um, I do have some uh, images that you are able to download and use to uh, include in your ephemera. So if you want to print these and include them, um, these have kind of a nice green base. This one has more of a yellow um, but these will accent that bright red really well. So you can use these, you can save them for another project, you can include them if you want, you can throw them away, whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, and then we've got um, our tracer here. So if you are not a flower drawer um, and you just want to use this as a traceable, you can absolutely do that. Um, I have got uh, carbon paper to transfer the flower. And I'll talk about that a little bit at transfer time. If you don't have carbon paper, you can also use uh, a pencil. And then um, what I did on my original piece here um, is I used some rubber stamps for the word friendship. But I also included um, some options you can cut out and use um, and glue on if you don't have rubber stamps available so that you could include that word if you wanted to. Um, again make it your own. So if friendship is not a word you want to include, maybe you want to include something else like bloom or um, love or, you know, whatever word uh, is calling to you, you can do absolutely do that. You can do it with stamps. You can print out your own word, whatever you want to do. But I did include that. Um, other little extras, um, you're going to need water to clean off your brushes, paper towels, uh, palette to put your paint on, um, scissors, um, paint brushes in various sizes. Um, I always recommend small, medium, and large round, small, medium, and large flats. Um, when I'm using my uh, matte medium, uh, I'm going to use just an older brush because that is really hard on brushes. So um, we're using fluid or gel medium as our adhesive today. If you don't have that, you can just use uh, a glue stick. If you have a glue stick, you can use Mod Podge if you have Mod Podge. Um, if you have white glue, I would suggest thinning it down a little bit, but you can also thin down uh, white glue as well. So um, those are easy substitutions. And then um, I will be using my heat gun. Um, you can use a heat gun or a hairdryer to speed along the process. If you don't have that available, um, a lot of this doesn't take very long to dry. And so um, I encourage you at that point, maybe just pause uh, the tutorial and then take a quick break and come back and uh, go from there. So don't stress too much about that. Um, and I mentioned the tracer and carbon paper. 
Well, I think that's it for supplies. Oh, one other thing that I did not mention. Um, two things, two things I didn't mention. So what, what are we creating on? Um, in mixed media, the substrate, that's what we create on, is super flexible. I'm going to create on a piece of mixed media paper because I have a few different versions of this already. Um, so I'm creating on mixed media paper. You can create on watercolor paper. That's nice and sturdy. Um, you could create on a canvas or you could create on a wood panel. Um, you could create on anything. You can create on a book cover. So you just need something to create on. Um, and then when we create our background, um, I had suggested having um, stencils of your choice. So I have some stencils here. Um, these are all Tim Holtz stencils that I keep on this little key ring. And I'm just going to choose them with a small pattern uh, to help um, add some busyness to my background. Um, if you don't have stencils, stamps are a nice substitution. So um, I've got a lot of stamps laying around, so maybe I'll incorporate some of those. So again, use what you have. Um, if you don't have stamps or stencils available, the idea here is just to create busyness on the background. So you can even use fingerprints. Um, sometimes I keep things like auto caps available that I can stamp with. So it doesn't have to be something that you buy from the store. So don't be afraid to be a little fun and creative with that. All right, now that I've got 9 million things on my desktop, let's get started. Um, one thing I mentioned before we begin, uh, I would absolutely love it if you would share your finished piece with me. Um, you can do that by tagging Painted Cicada at Painted Cicada um, on the socials, or you can join my group. I'll put the link up at the end for that, but I love seeing what everybody creates. Um, all right, I'm going to take a deep breath because I have just been going on and on about these supplies. All right. Um, if you have gesso available and you're working on a thin piece of paper, you can gesso your paper. Um, that will keep some of the paint and some of the adhesive from absorbing. That step is optional. I'm actually not going to do that because I don't feel like that's super necessary, but I do mention that for people who are using uh, thinner substrates, you can always do that. Um, but what we're going to do now is start sorting through our ephemera and we're going to pick it out and tear it um, and make sure that we have enough to cover this background. So uh, what I want you to do is just kind of start sorting through, looking through your scraps and um, making them a home on your page. And as you do so, um, try to keep your background somewhat neutral with hints of green. Um, of course you can incorporate other colors. Not everything I have is just green. As you can see, this is kind of a rainbow. This has got purple in it as well. Um, so however you want to make your background, but uh, I encourage you to, um, for consistency and cohesion, uh, aim for colors, aim for um, things that are on the neutral side, which means whites, browns, um, tan, gray, just kind of neutral colors with hints of green. Um, if you don't have hints of green, you can always, uh, you know, include more of the uh, overlays that we're going to do. Um, so uh, when you're doing this, what I want you to think about is we want to create um, a cohesive piece. So I'm not just going to place things all over, but if I have a larger piece like this, I might break this down into two pieces or three pieces. So this the same pattern is in multiple places. That helps make things a little more cohesive on a page. So don't be afraid to tear and cut. And then what I want to encourage you to do is we're just going to fill up this background and have lots of options. And it's okay to layer too. It doesn't all have to be, um, you know, fit, fit perfectly like Tetris. It's okay to layer and rip and tear and 
kind of create your own designs. And the way things end up in our final version are never quite the same as when I plan this out, but I do just like to kind of place it so that I have an idea of where things might go and how much of my page I still need left to cover. So that's why I plan it out ahead of time, but I don't stick to it, um, you know, as a hard rule. I like to, to give myself some flexibility. And this helps me kind of lay out the colors. If I see too much green on one side, maybe I'll, you know, vary that up and switch it and play with it a little bit. And as you're choosing your ephemera and your scraps, keep in mind they don't really have to have anything to do with uh, the carnation or January or, you know, um, they can be totally unrelated. We're just creating a nice busy background uh, so that your eye has lots of visual interest in the finished piece. So. I have lots of good options and what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm going to uh, get my matte medium and we're going to start gluing this stuff on. Alright, so a trick to using a matte medium or Mod Podge or uh, whatever kind of adhesive that you have is um, I'm going to put a layer of this under and then a layer over. So um, 
that's really the only trick to it. Unless you're using a glue stick and then I don't suggest that you do that. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, if you are gonna frame this or um, just depending on what size you're working on, um, try to keep a nice strip around the edges that don't have the, the things that you lo absolutely love. Um, a lot of this is gonna get covered up as we kind of uh, smudge and smush and um, add some layers. But for example, if I was really attached to this rose, I might want not want to put it around the edge. Okay, if I was really attached to my bird, I wouldn't want to put it, you know, over here where if I frame it or mat it, it might get lost. So if there are things that you're absolutely in love with, try to keep them a little more central. Um, but really the idea here is just to kind of layer. Um, in this, you can see I have things on top of things, on top of things. So um, for example, um, this piece I have on top of this, I might, uh, glue the upper layers first so that I don't lose that placement. Um, if I pull everything off and put it back on, um, you know, things might, my layers might get a little different. But just play with it, have fun with it. There's no hard and fast rules. Um, we are just literally creating some layers here, some, some visual interest. So, uh, just play with it and eventually we're going to get all of this adhered on our page. A lot of the smaller things I'll pull to the side. As we work, there's a layer of matte medium under and then a layer of matte medium over the top. It's okay to let things hang off over the edge as well because you can always come back um, and cut that edge off later if you want to. Oops. If you have heavier pieces of paper, like really thick scrapbook paper, um, sometimes it's a good idea to add the adhesive both on the page and the back of the page um, that you're gluing on as well as uh, a layer over the top. I typically like to work with a uh, fluid matte medium. I know that there are other artists that prefer gel matte medium, which is a little bit heavier. Um, that really is just a matter of taste. There's no right or wrong there.
It is also okay um, as you're working to leave white space. Don't feel like every little nook and cranny has to be totally covered. I often struggle with that a little bit. Um, white space is my nemesis. I always hide too much. If you do have pages that you've printed, um, just something to keep in mind, you don't want to go over those um, with a lot of brush strokes, over and over and over. Um, they might bleed a little bit. Um, printer ink will do that, so just be cautious. That's just a word of caution about that. like this strip and I don't know really where to put it. Maybe right here. I really do enjoy collaging and just kind of playing with it and see what comes of this background because every time they are very, very different. And I've got some tissue paper here. I'm going to add last because that tends to be somewhat transparent. So I'll add just a little wisp of green in there. And repetition is your friend when you have busyness. Repetition helps this busyness feel a little more cohesive. So that's why I use certain elements multiple times. That's why I encourage you to kind of rip and tear um, the same scrap and use it in multiple places. It really does just bring it all together.
All right. I feel like I'm at a place where I really love this. So I am going to let this dry. Um, just a moment here and kind of regroup my thoughts. Don't forget at any point, if you are not in the same place as me, you can always pause um, the video. There is no rush to get through this. Work at your own pace. That is the beauty of YouTube. All right. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I am going to mix up some olive green paint. <clears throat> and this is where, um, with olive green um, and that phthalo green, I am going to, um, well, let's see. I'm going to focus on the olive green first. So um, I've got green gold, which is one of my favorite colors, and I could actually use this right out of the bottle and totally love it. But it's somewhat transparent. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, brown to it. This is burnt sienna. Um, so not very much, as you can see there. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to kind of stir this up. That brown is going to add a little more opacity. My green gold is a little um, transparent. Oops. You can see I added so much brown. I've just got mostly brown. But you can mix up any shade of green that you would like. So yeah, that's kind of an olivey green. I like that. Um, and this is where uh, you can do some stenciling or some stamping. So um, maybe I will take a stamp um, and you can stamp with acrylic paint. So I'm just going to add a few of these squiggles in here. Again, I add a couple of everything that I do because repetition is my friend uh, when we're doing uh, busy things. So lots of repetition. A little bit here, a little bit there. Um, and then anytime you use acrylic paint with the stamp, you want to make sure you wash that off. Don't let that dry on your stamp. That would not be good. So I have a little stamping and a little stenciling. So maybe... And when I say stenciling, get a nice, uh, small, small uh, print. You know, you don't want anything too wild and crazy. And then, so I'm just going to add a little bit of this. And you can use a stencil brush. Sometimes I just use my finger and tap it in. If you're not afraid to get messy. Um, so that's a technique, or if you have a stencil brush, you can do that as well. There's no right or wrong. We're just adding texture. Sometimes using stamps and stencils is really handy to cover up some of that. Um, if you've got a lot of blank area. But again, this is just a way to add some more busyness. Um, and keep it cohesive, to be honest. in multiple areas. So I did my stamp in a few different places. I did my stenciling in a few different places. Um, 
you know, I moved quickly. I didn't overthink it. Just creating some busyness. And I always like to wipe off my stamps and my stencils right after I use them. Otherwise I forget and things get ruined. My top secret weapon is a baby wipe, so there we go. All right, so we've added lots of busyness. Um, now we're gonna do something fun with fingerprints. So I'm gonna get some Titan Buff, that's my cream. So use whatever cream that you uh, wanted to use. And I am going to tap, let's say, three fingers in here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I am going to add some fingerprints to my piece. I love doing this and I just, Kind of go in there, add some paint, and don't overthink it. A little bit here, a little bit there. And what I like about doing this is that um, using the cream, it's a neutral color. It takes back a little bit of that busyness, but it also adds just another layer of texture. Um, it's easy to do. It's fun, it's free, and I like it. I use that technique a lot. So just add a few fingerprints. Um, make it your own. You know, if fingerprints aren't, aren't your thing, you can always dot with something else or whatever you'd like. I kind of like the messiness and the freeness of the fingerprints. Um, but we have added several layers at this point, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to dry all of this. Um, so uh, for your ears and comfort, I am going to mute. Uh, I'm going to use my uh, dryer here. If you don't have a dryer, uh, take a five minute break and come back. And a lot of this will probably be dry for you and you'll be ready to move on. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and dry this layer with my heat gun and then we'll move on to the next step.
All right, I am mostly dry. Now we have got a very, very busy background at this point. And so my next step is going to be um, to add a layer of brayering or scraping. Um, and I will show you both. Um, so this is a brayer. When we talk about a brayer, um, it's just kind of a, a rolling pin uh, that we can use. Um, you can get these online on Amazon fairly inexpensively. Sometimes you can find them in the mixed media section of an art store. Um, this one was probably about $8. Um, if you don't have a brayer, another thing you can use is a scraper. Um, and when I say a scraper, I mean a straight edge. You can use a credit card as a scraper. You can use a spatula. Um, I've got this thing. I have no idea where this came from, um, but this is a great scraper. Um, so I'm going to start with a little bit of gesso. If you don't have gesso, you can use white paint. Um, but we are going to gesso a little bit of white. Um, with a brayer or scraper, and then we're gonna do a little bit of the, the cream or the Titan Buff with the, the scraper or the um, brayer. And I'll show you both. So, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is use gesso. And, um, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna add a little bit of gesso right here onto my paper towel. You can use your plate if you've got a plate. Um, and I'm going to do the brayer. So I like to do it on a paper towel just because it kind of will offload it a bit as well when I rub it on that paper towel. Um, but the idea here is to oops, bang, um, add kind of just a nice thin white layer on there. Now that's difficult to see. Let me, let me get some more gesso here. If you're using white paint, it's going to be a lot more opaque. There we go. Here's some gesso. So as you can see, I'm just moving this around um, all over the place. And adding this is gonna tone down this background ever so slightly. Now, if you go crazy with it, like I just did, you might cover up some things that you really like. And if that's the case, get a paper towel, wet it, and you can pull some of that back. So I really like my bird. I'm gonna keep my bird right there. Um, I really like this flower kind of poking through. So I'm gonna wipe that back a little bit. Um, I like the texture on this little thing. So uh, if things get lost that you really like, you can bring those sections back out. Um, so that's the brayer. And um, I have a brayer. I actually have one that I like to keep kind of chunky and messy that I don't clean uh, very well. And then I have one that I keep and I clean and it's nice and smooth. All right. So that uh, you can do with your gesso or your white paint. Um, next, I'm going to get the Titan Buff and I'm going to show you what I do when I scrape. So I'm just going to get a little bit of this cream color and my scraper tool. So whether you have a credit card or, you know, whatever, um, and you can just kind of scrape some color across. Let me lift this up. So down here, I just have a scrape of that Titan buff. Um, you can use this technique to hide things. You can use this uh, to fill area. You can use it to take back, take down a color. So if you feel like something is too bright or too much of a focal point, you can scrape right over the top of it. So um, like that landscape there, I don't want that to be, I don't want that to stand out, you know, more than my flower. So use the scraper technique or the brayer technique to just kind of play with these colors, tone them down where they need to be toned down. Um, we don't want our background to outshine. We want it to enhance. So use your scraper, use your brayer, and just have some fun. Anywhere you go too deep, you can always pull it back. Um, but I encourage you to use the Titan Buff or your cream and your white to do this. This will just kind of neutralize a lot of this background. I'm 
pear in there. That always happens. Always, always. Um, and if you feel like you need to put a little more green, totally optional, um, you can uh, use that light lime, light green. So uh, for me, that was phthalo and white um, is what I had suggested. And at this point in the process, uh, what we're doing um, is I kind of neutralize some of this. Now I'm going to um, mix up a light green color. This is a little minty for me, so I'm adding just a pinch of that green gold. Um, but I want a nice light green. And I might bring just a little bit of design back. So maybe I'll add a little water to this. Um, and kind of add in patches of color, thin it down. Um, you, know, you can add spots if you want to. Um, you can come back through and add a few more fingerprints if you want. Uh, this is just a way if you want a little to add a little more color once we tone it down, you can. Uh, this step is kind of optional, so. Don't feel like it's a necessity. You can kind of cover up some of those white areas. You can connect, you know, if there's areas that doesn't have enough busyness, don't have enough busyness, you can add a little busyness. Uh, totally your call. Lots of layers uh, is where we're going with this. All right. One more time, I am going to dry this completely. Um, so again, uh, take a minute uh, and dry your work. And I'm going to mute and use my dryer. And then we're going to move on to the next step. We're going to start adding that flower. For the next step, uh, what we're going to do is some doodles. And I'm going to do this uh, with a white paint pen. Um, so on this version, I've got some back here. They kind of just add some subtle um, foliage in the background. So that's what we're doing. So that's why I wanted this completely dry because I don't want to ruin my paint pens. For this one, I'm going to use white. Um, and I'm just going to come in here and freehand some leaves and I want you to do the same uh, don't worry don't stress too much about you know them being perfect um, we're just gonna kind of go with it so um, I'm gonna just draw a line here slightly off center um, and that's kind of the step is just start with your your center line and go from there I'm just gonna add some leaves there's no right or wrong just leaf shapes we're just adding some foliage. Your leaf shapes can look totally different from my leaf shapes. And 
I'm using my white paint pen for this because I don't want this to distract too much from my carnation. one kind of large one off to the left. I'll do another smaller one off to the right. They can be similar leaves. They can be different leaves. Maybe it's a different plant growing. Totally up to you. I tend to move quickly with this because I don't want to overthink my leaves. Um, but do be careful because there is a lot of texture in our background, right? From our layers. you're satisfied with your leaves uh, now we are going to take the opportunity to add in add on our carnation so for that we're going to use that tracer um, if you've got carbon paper available what you do is you put that shiny side down um, in between your artwork and your flowers if you do not have uh, tracer paper available, what you're going to do is you're going to take a pencil. Um, let me find one. One second. Um, and I know on camera it's hard to see, but um, you can see through the back of your printer paper, right? So we are just going to scribble all over like this. And this is going to act like your carbon paper. And if you use this as your method of transfer, you want to go nice and dark with your pencil scraping back here. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be a very light transfer. Um, if you're using carbon paper, what you want to do is put your transfer where you want it. Um, because I've done this a few, this lesson a few times, I'm going to center this one. Uh, my original, as you can see up in the corner there, is not centered, so totally up to you how you, how you place your flower. Um, I think I'm going to center these babies. Uh, and then you're just going to trace. Be flexible and move fairly fast uh, when you do your transfer. Push down nice and hard. Um, Flowers are all different, right? This is just going to be our guide. So if your petal looks a little different, that's fine. If not all of it gets transferred perfectly and you have to improvise and draw in part of your petal, that's fine too. Just remember, uh, push hard and get that transferred. And I kind of intentionally uh, take some liberty and go off the lines because I don't want all my flowers to be exactly the same. All right. When I'm doing flowers, um, I like to work in threes. That's why I have two blossoms and a bud.
All right, so I have mine transferred. As you can see, it's very, you know, it's busy on that background. It's a little hard to see, that's okay. Um, continue transferring yours. If you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that. Uh, what I'm gonna do right now um, is I'm gonna focus on the shape of the carnation. Um, and so if you need to draw the carnation um, on your own, <laughs> You don't have a printer available uh, this step might be helpful so um, the shape of our carnation we kind of have this uh, trumpet at the bottom which will add a little uh, base to and then you have your stem okay inside the flower and I'm gonna draw this one very large um, so it's easier for you to see uh, we have these pieces and what they are, they're kind of like um, two lines, and then in between, you're just going to draw jaggedy edges. That's going to be your carnation petals. And so you're going to start by adding them kind of around the center of your flower, going in different directions. Okay. And then you just work your way out with different layers of these petals. Okay. So my sketch of a carnation was very loose. All right, um, so that's kind of, you know, when you would finish your flower here. Um, so that's kind of the general way to draw a carnation, okay? Um, but what I'm gonna show you, so each of these little pieces is a petal. So we've got, let's say, I'm gonna draw this obviously larger. So let's say this is your petal, all right? Um, what we're going to do, and, and don't paint right now, just kind of uh, watch me here, is I'm going to take my pyrrole red and uh, we're going to create three colors. Um, we're going to create a light, a medium, well, white, a medium, and then the pyrrole red. So we need pyrrole red and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my white pure white. I'm gonna pull some over to the side and add a little bit of pyrrole red to make a medium shade. So I've got my bright, bright red. I've got my medium shade, which, which ends up being a pink. And then I'm gonna have white. So three colors for our flower. The first thing I'm gonna do with all my petals, and you can do this with a paintbrush and white paint, or you can do this with your paint pen, um, is I'm gonna go, go around all my edges of every petal, not the stems, just the petals, with this white. That's gonna hide the tracer line, and that's gonna be the lightest area, okay? Um, so once I get, I know this is hard to see on camera, so I'm going to do that tracer line. Then I'm going to start pulling that white downward towards the center of my petal. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with this pink. And we're going to add this lighter color to the center or the middle of the petal, not the middle of the flower, the middle of the petal. And then we're going to come back we're going to add that pink to the bottom of the petal. And what that's going to do is it's going to give an effect uh, where the end is lighter with the white. We've got the pink and we've got the red. Um, so that's essentially what we're doing with flower. I just wanted to kind of walk you through it before we actually do it on our piece. So uh, now that I've got my piece here, what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to go around all my edges with white. Um, so I'm going to do that with a nice, small, round brush. And I've got my white, and I'm going to do each of my petals. This helps me hide that tracer line. And take some, some freedom with these petals. You can change the shape. Once you have the general flower shape, don't be afraid to adjust it.
So I'm going to do all of one flower before I move on to the second, just so you can see visually what I'm doing. But feel free as you're working to do all of one, all of the white before you go back to the other colors if you want to. Whatever's easier for you. Um, but I'm going to show you one flower first and then move on to the other flower. All right, so I did my white outline. I'm gonna come back through and pull some of that white down. And so that's just gonna fill some of that space. It's gonna create that nice uh, light edge on the flower. All right, you're really gonna start to see this take shape once I add this pink. So I pulled my white down. Now I'm gonna add pink to the center. Center of the petal, not center of the flower. And you want most of your petal to be pink, right? We're going to have white tips, but mostly we want that pink. All right, so let me lift this. So that really starts to take form. Now what we're going to do, and this is really where it becomes a flower, is we're going to take the tiniest bit of this pyrrole red and we're just going to add a little bit at the base of each petal behind the white of the flower in front of it. So um, we want to keep this layered. So wherever there is a space between so for example on this petal this is a far away petal i've got white pink and then red at the base for this one here white pink red at the base white pink red at the base of each flower petal and that really makes this flower pop so just the tiniest bit of red poking out at the base of each petal And that's just kind of our shadow color there.
And once you have the three colors uh, put on, you can come back and, um, you know, touch up any areas you need to touch up. Um, or you can move on to the second flower. And there's no right or wrong. If it's easier for you to add, you know, the red first and then the pink and then the white, you can do that. There's, you know, my way is not the only way. So I'm going to come back here and do this second flower. I'm, I like to start from the white and move inward, but um, however you want to get the color on these flowers is absolutely fine. And I do, before I'm completely finished, I'll come back with a paint pen and I'll um, make these edges a little more clear and petal-like. So I'm starting on this second flower and I'm adding the white and pulling that down. in just a few minutes I think my dogs are gonna start barking so when that happens I am gonna mute wherever I am in this lesson so you don't have to hear them because my kids ordered pizza for delivery it's been one of those nights in my house so it had to be delivery dinner And you'll see when I start to add this red, that's when it really makes this carnation pop. You can really see the difference in the petals. Once you add that, just you know, a few of those shadows at the bottom really makes that flower petal stick out. Oops, the section I missed the pink. And with that red, sometimes less is more. You don't have to go crazy with it. It really is just, it's a shadow color to make all the lighter colors really pop.
All right, so for the most part, I'm satisfied with that flower. I might come back in a bit and add some um, finishing touches around the edges of those petals, but I'm fairly happy with that. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix up the green for um, the stems and the leaves. So for that, I'm gonna use phthalo green and white, uh, similar to what I, excuse me, similar to what I added on my background. Um, if you wanna add a little yellow to that, you can. Uh, basically, I just want a different green. I just want a darker green. So feel free to mix up whatever green makes you happy. Let me add a little bit of my yellow tone. You can even add in a smidge of brown. I just wouldn't go too crazy with the brown because you don't want your flower to look dead. But sometimes adding a little bit of brown to the green uh, tones it down a little bit. Um, out in nature, we don't have uh, a lot of pure pigment. In our colors, there's a lot of shadow. So once you have a green that you're satisfied with, um, pretty much just filling in the space. So we've got that little trumpet right underneath each flower. And then under the trumpet, there's just a little foliage. If you are using heavy body paint, you may want to thin it just a pinch so you can get a nice uh, clean line when you do the stem. Now you'll notice I have not done the little flower bud yet. We're going to come back to that, but I am going to do all these little leaves. the foliage right there around that bud and the stem. So really I just added the green. Well, that little flower bud um, Honestly, what I like to do with that is I'll fill it in with my medium color, my pink. And while it's wet, I'm just going to go through and add a few little squiggles with the red. Oops, there we go. I need to quit moving. I'm making that focus bounce around like crazy. Um, and then when this is completely dry, so again, if you need to pull out your dryer, do so. I'm just going to zap mine quickly. It will not take very long.
All right, next I'm gonna grab my black paint pen uh, and I am gonna outline this, the green stems with black paint pen. And then I'm gonna outline uh, the, the white petals. I'm gonna come back with my white paint pen and I'm just gonna make those petals, um, the edge of the petals um, nice and perfect. So black for the stems and then white around those petals. And if you don't have a paint pen, you can always do this with a really fine paint mark or a paintbrush. But this makes this pop, this makes our flowers pop from the background because our background is still really busy. So that was my black paint pen there. Up at the top here, just gonna use a white paint pen and kind of make sure I've got these petals the way I like them. And then after this, we have one more step. Again, if you don't have a paint pen, just use a paintbrush and some paint. just makes our our carnations a little brighter there um, and the last step is our word friendship so um, what I think I'm gonna do this time is I am just gonna cut it out and kind of Mod Podge it on there if you've got stamps letter stamps you can do that or if the word is not your thing you can completely leave that off so um, again, you can place it wherever you would like. So, um, you can see up on my original up in the corner, um, I've got it kind of halfway down the page. So wherever you have kind of an open area, that's where you can put the word friendship. Um, again, if you're Mod Podging or I'm sorry, matte medium, just make sure you have a layer under and over. And then the last thing that I'm going to do um, is anywhere I feel like uh, maybe these leaves got lost um, that I drew, maybe I'll add in a few more or maybe I'll just, uh, you know, go over them again with white. So um, there's no right or wrong here. You know, you can add a couple in from the sides. Do whatever you want to do to make your own finishing touches. All right. This is your piece. Um, wherever you feel like you need extra highlights, extra um, doodles, uh, whatever it is. 
we can go ahead and add that in. Um, so let's see. Um, but that's pretty much all I have for you. Um, I'm going to stay here for just a second and I'll clean up some of my supplies. So if you are following along with me live, feel free to ask a question in the comments. Um, if you are watching on the replay, uh, feel free to um, ask me questions. Um, you can always, always message me um, on Facebook and um, I'll answer your questions or um, you can reach out in the group as well once you share your painting. Um, I said I would put up that address. So let me find that banner for you. All right, so here's my group. It is the Painted Cicadas Art and Share. Um, so if you're not yet a member, I would love for you to join and share your work with me. Um, it's my most favorite thing in the whole wide world um, is to see what everybody else has created. Um, and it's free to join and you can share your own work um, as well as work that you create with me in there. Um, and I will uh, also mention, um, I do have a supporter option. Um, it's only $4.99 a month. And uh, what that gets you is each and every class that I plan. So um, for only $4.99, uh, when you become a supporter, you'll get access to every lesson that I create, as well as some lessons um, that are just for supporters. So consider that, um, totally optional, um, but it is an option and the cost $4.99 is less than one single class. So um, if you're interested in that, you can check it out. I always post about it on my page, so you can always find a link there if you're interested. Um, and then uh, I also want to give a shout out to some of my most recent supporters. Um, because I am so excited to have you on board with us. So I can't wait to see what you guys are making with me. Um, feel free to say hello um, in the comments or in the group. Um, but let's see here. Oops. I done wrote down everybody's name and lost my piece of paper. That is just my luck. Um, so, Christy. Shout out to Christy. Shout out to uh, Kim and Kathy and Karen and Patty and Katie and Corinne. I am so glad you guys are here. Um, I'll give a shout out to Bridget and Debbie and Charlene and Anita and Laura, um, who've been subscribers for a while. Um, but I am so thankful for each and every one of you. I'm glad you're here. Thank you all so much for joining me and I will see you guys next time. Bye everybody.